Hi, Miles McLeader here. Welcome back. In our last program, we took a walk through history and found how measurement has evolved over the centuries. We also discovered how very important it is to have standard units of measurement so that all people are measuring the same thing in the same way. Today, we'll learn about linear measurement. Linear measurement is the measuring of a distance between two endpoints, any two endpoints like the distance between each end of your thumbnail, the height of a desk, the length of a room, or something as simple as finding out how tall you are. In other words, what the length of your body is. Well, here I am at the tailor's shop. Let's go inside. I'm about to be measured for more than my height. Remember Meter McLeader, my brother, the tailor's apprentice? Well, he promised me if I'd supply him with the material, he'd make me a new suit. Well, I bought the material and I came by to give it to him, but he's out running errands for Tony here. Tony's Meter's boss, he's a real tailor. And he's nice enough to measure me himself rather than have me wait for Meter to return. This will just take a second. As you can see, linear measurement can be the distance between any two points. When you first began measuring, you may have found the length of your desk by using <laughs> insects or crayons, and that's a great way to begin measuring. You probably also estimated or guessed how many of these insects or crayons it took to go across your desk before you actually began measuring with them. Wow! Now those are colorful insects. A variety of things have been used over the centuries to measure length, such as a foot or an arm. And that can get confusing. So isn't it great to know that today we have a customary or standard set of units with which to measure? In the United States, the smallest whole unit we use to measure length is the inch. And an inch is from here to here. Or it can be the width of my thumbnail. Twelve of these one inch units is called a foot. So from here to here is one foot or 12 inches. Three of these one foot units are called a yard. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. A yard is also equivalent to 36 inches. 34, 35, 36. Oops, there's a the phone. I'll be right back. I got it! I got it! It's for me! I've got it! Hello, Miles McLeader. Oh, hello, Meter. It's my brother, Meter, the tailor's apprentice. You want to know what? You want to know who decided that 36 inches or 3 feet was a yard? He thinks you want to know that, too. Right again, Meter. Well, you know, to do that, we're going to have to take a trip back into measurement history. In the 13th century, the King of England, King Edward I, ordered a measuring stick to be made that would serve as a standard of measurement for the yard, and it was called the Iron Ulna. The longest unit of length we use in the customary system is the mile, and the mile comes from the ancient Roman words, milia passum, which means 1,000 paces. As you walk, a pace is a distance from here to here. The mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. In other words, if I took 5,280 of these one-foot rulers and laid them end-to-end, -end, I'd have a mile. <laughs> 5,278, 5,279, 5,280. Yes, we have a mile. Can you see me? I'm one mile away. Can you see me? I'm one mile away! 
You should also know that 1,760 of these yardsticks laid end to end is also a mile. However, since we only have one of these yardsticks, we'll not be doing that today. You want yardsticks? I'll give you yardsticks. I'm sorry, but if you look closely, I think you'll discover that these are meter sticks. Frequently, the inch and foot are also referred to by these two symbols. This is for inch, and this is for foot. If you should see this, it means the same as two feet, 10 inches. And this is the same as six feet, four inches. It's easy to switch back and forth between these units of linear measurement. You simply multiply or divide. It is necessary to divide when going from a smaller unit of measure to a larger unit. In other words, try to remember that it always takes several of the smaller units to create a larger unit of measure. And the reverse is true when you're converting from a larger unit to a smaller. Then it's necessary to multiply. For example, converting from feet to inches, we change one foot to 12 inches. In other words, we multiply one times 12. I am 74 inches tall. How tall am I in feet and inches combined? Remember, there are 12 inches in a foot, and since we're going from a smaller unit of measure to a larger, we divide. Here I am over here! <laughs> I'll divide 74, the number of inches tall I am, by 12, the number of inches in a foot, and the quotient is 6, remainder 2. That means I am 6 feet, 2 inches tall, because the remainder of 2 represents the leftover inches. Here's another problem. Let's say a city block is 400 feet long. A department store is to be built which will cover two-fifths of the length of this city block. How many feet of this block will the building cover? To solve a problem like this, First of all, look and see what we already know. First, we know that the building covers two-fifths of a city block. And second, we know the length of the block is 400 feet. Let's divide. The total length of the block is 400 feet. I'll divide that by five, the number of equal sections a block is divided into. I'll divide 400 by 5, the number of equal sections in the block, and the quotient is 80. That means that each section is 80 feet long. And since the building covers two of these equal sections, we multiply 2 times 80, which gives us a product of 160. That means the building is 160 feet long. I know it's here somewhere. There it is. Miles McLeader. Oh, hi, Meter. Well, how'd you know I was at the fabric store? I bet you're calling about my suit and the measurements, right? You're not? What's that? You're what? You're kidding. We were just talking about that building. Remember that building we were talking about? Well, guess what? Meter's been hired to create a banner for the front of it. Well, how about that? We just finished finding that out. It's 160 feet across the front of it. What's that? He says the material is only sold in yard lengths, not feet. I believe you are correct. I see some right here. Well, then you need to change linear feet to yards. Let's divide. Yes. Well, you realize, Meter, that we're dividing 160 by 3 since we're going from a smaller unit of measure to a larger unit, in this case, from feet to yards. And remember, there's three feet in every yard. 160 divided by 3 equals 53 remainder 1. That's right, meter. 160 divided by 3 is 53 remainder 1. That's right. The remainder of 1 is left over feet. So that means you'll have to buy 54 yards of material to include that extra foot. No problem, meter. Glad we could help you. Oh, we understand. 
Meter says things, but he's got to run. He's got a very busy schedule all of a sudden. What with my suit to tailor and the banner material to purchase. Oh, we understand, Meter. Bye for now. Well, what about that Meter? Says he's still going to get that suit to me on time. However, while we're waiting on Meter in the suit, let's take a look at the longest unit of measure, the mile. Here's an example. Two children are taking a vacation with their grandparents. The family is to travel from Fort Lauderdale to Washington, D.C. Along the way, there will be stops in Orlando, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, and Norfolk, Virginia. How many miles will be traveled in this round-trip excursion? To solve a problem like this, let's put the journey into chunks. The first chunk will be the distance from Fort Lauderdale to Orlando. This leg of the trip is 221 miles. The next chunk is a distance from Orlando to Savannah, Georgia. This is 279 miles. The next chunk will be from Savannah to Norfolk, Virginia. This chunk is 481 miles. The final chunk from Norfolk, Virginia to Washington, D.C. is 193 miles. Now let's add these various chunks of distance together. The sum is 1,174 miles. Since a family will travel the same distance home, we simply double our answer to find the total miles traveled. We know to do this because it was stated in the beginning of the problem that it will be a round trip journey. So the total number of miles is 2,348 miles. Right, my new suit. Can't wait to try this on. Here. Thank you, Mr. Moore. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh my goodness, Meter, what have you done to me? Look at this custom-made suit. Look at the length of the sleeves. Oh my gosh. The pants. Look at the length of the pants. Meter, what have you done? You're supposed to know how to measure. Hello? Meter, what have you done to me? Yes, it arrived. Wearing it? Well, if that's what you want to call what I'm doing. Oh, oh, you're right, there's been a mistake. What do you mean? I have someone else's suit and they have mine? I'm wearing the wrong suit? Meter, get me my suit. Now this is more like it. Sleeves? Perfect. Pants, the right length. Now that's what I call measuring up.